So the formula is T is equal to the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. And so the result is negative 0 0.5875. So the intersection of the degrees of freedom and the significance level alpha is 2.3646. And this is now our critical value. For the 90% confidence interval, since zero is found between these two values, then we say that the mean difference is not statistically significant. In this video, we will be performing a one-sample t-test. The question goes, in the popular game among us, players collaborate to complete tasks and identify imposters within the group. A group of eight students recorded the time it took them to complete a specific set of tasks. The completion times are as follows. The developers of Among Us claim that the average time for completing the task is 85 seconds. Is there sufficient evidence to suggest that the average time it takes students to complete tasks in Among Us is significantly different from the claimed average time of 85 seconds by the game developers? We proceed by opening the app and then click this menu bar over here and search for one sample t-test. As what we can observe, there are a couple of things that we need to input into the app in order for us to perform the one sample t-test. The first one of those is to answer the question, is a data set given? And for this particular example, we have a data set and so we answer. Here we will input the given data. So we will type in 80, 90, 75, 85, 88, 92, 78, and 82. Next, we input the population mean. And based on the problem, it is stated that the developers of Among Us claims that the average time for completing the task is 85 seconds. So we input 85. And for the significance level alpha, since it is not given in the problem, we will use the most common value of 0 0.05. We are tasked to test whether there is sufficient evidence to suggest that the average time it takes students to complete tasks in Among Us is significantly different from the claimed average of 85 seconds. Since there is no designated direction whether the mean is greater than or less than 85 seconds, this gives us the hint that we are to conduct a two-tailed test. Now that we have provided all the required information, we are now ready to click Calculate. Since we are given the data set, we start the solution by calculating the relevant descriptive statistics. This include the sample size, the sample mean, and the sample standard deviation. For the sample size, we count the number of individual data points, which is equal to eight. Next, for the sample mean, we add each of the individual data points and then divide by the sample size. As a result, we have, next we subtract the sample mean to each of the individual data points. Square this difference and then add everything. This will be our sum of squared deviations from the mean. Next, we divide the previous result by n minus one which is equal to eight minus one or seven to get the sample variance. Lastly, we take the square root of the variance to get the sample standard deviation. Now that we have already calculated the relevant descriptive statistics, we are now ready to perform the one sample t-test. So here we have already summarized the results. Okay, so the significance level alpha is given as 0 0.05, and we are tasked to conduct a two-tailed test. So for step two, formulate the hypothesis. So since we are conducting a two-tailed test, the alternative hypothesis will use the symbol is not equal to. That's why this will be our null and alternative hypothesis. For step three, we have to calculate the degrees of freedom. And the formula for this one is the sample size minus one. So in this case, since the sample size is eight, eight minus one will be equal to seven. Then for step four, we formulate our decision rule. To do this, we have to find the critical value. 
Okay, so we proceed to the tea table in the references below. The first thing that we will do is to locate the degrees of freedom in the first column of the table. So in this case, here is the degrees of freedom of 7. And the next is to locate the significance level alpha in the second row since we are conducting a two-tailed test. We locate the significance level alpha 0 0.05. So the intersection of the degrees of freedom and the significance level alpha is 2.3646. And this is now our critical value. So going back, we have our critical value of 2.3646. As a result, the decision rule is to reject the null hypothesis if the absolute value of the test statistic is greater than the absolute value of 2.3646. Otherwise, fail to reject the null hypothesis. Now you may ask, why did we use the absolute value in our decision rule? Now the reason for this is that we have two critical values actually, a negative value and a positive value since we are conducting a two-tailed test. So any value that is lower than negative 2.3646 is considered significant. And any value of the test statistic that is greater than 2.3646 is considered significant. And that is why, to make the decision rule brief and concise, we use the absolute value. Now for step 5, we now calculate our test statistic. Okay, this will be easier now since we have already calculated the descriptive statistics a while ago. So the formula is T is equal to the sample mean minus the population mean divided by the sample standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. And so the result is negative 0.5875. Using the calculator, 83.75 minus 85, okay, then we go down, divided by, okay, the square root of 8. And so the answer will be negative 0 0.5875, which is the same in this particular solution. Now for step 6, formulate the conclusion, it is very evident that the absolute value of our test statistic negative 0 0.5875 is less than the absolute value of the critical t value which is 2.3646 and so the result of the test is not statistically significant. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis stating that the true population mean is equal to 85. We have insufficient evidence to show that the true population mean is not equal to 85. In other words, we have insufficient evidence to show that the average time for completing the task in Among Us is different from the developer's claim of 85 seconds. For the optional part, using the p-value approach, in this case, we will be comparing the p-value associated with our test statistic with that of our significance level alpha. If the p-value is less than the significance level alpha, then we conclude that it is statistically significant. But if the p-value is greater than the significance level alpha, then the result of the test is not statistically significant. Since the p-value of our test statistic is 0 0.5753, which is greater than the significance level alpha, then we conclude that the result of the test is not statistically significant. In this case, we also included an APA format guide. A one-sample t-test was conducted to examine whether the sample mean differed significantly from a hypothesized population mean. The results did not reach statistical significance. T with the 7 degrees of freedom is equal to negative 0 0.5875, where P is greater than 0 0.05. These findings suggest that there is sufficient evidence to support the developer's claim that the average time for completing tasks in Among Us is 85 seconds. For the optional step 7, we construct the confidence interval of the mean difference. For the calculation of the confidence intervals, we just have this particular formula. Now notice that the only thing that changes as the confidence interval increases in value, for example, from 90% to 95% to 99%, the only thing that changes in value is actually the critical p-value. Notice that in the 90% confidence interval, the critical p-value is 1.8946. Here, it's 2.3646, and this one, 
it's 3.4995. But all the others are actually constants. Now to check whether the result of the test is significant or not, we just take a look at the confidence interval. For the 90% confidence interval, since zero is found between these two values, then we say that the mean difference is not statistically significant. Same with this one. The 95% confidence interval, and since zero is within this interval, then it is not statistically significant. Okay? Then the 99% confidence interval, still zero is within the interval. In this case, the mean difference is not statistically significant. And that concludes this solution. If you find this video helpful, please leave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to this channel if you are not yet subscribed and ring the notification bell so that you will be updated on our latest uploads. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.